Hello there, Ray here, and welcome back to the oldest vanilla survival server, Prototech. A world that never resets its map, the true limits of vanilla survival are tested on this server. With one of our goals to try to farm up every single item, block, and mob in the game, with the end dimension being a vast and mostly empty space, we try to place the majority of our farms here in the end dimension. This allows us to free up the overworld, allowing us to run really crazy farms like the lightning farm. So in today's episode, we're going to be building up a mega huge netherworld farm designed by Zero X. And if you guys didn't know, every weekend we have the Protech weekly event where we get together as a community and build up one of these major projects. And these events are streamed by the members, so make sure you guys follow us on Twitch. We're going out to help the other members build up a very large netherwork farm. Oh, you're over here. Okay, I see you guys. So you guys are building this out at the same portal that we have. Let's see, there's a mushroom farm over there. There is our grass block or mycelium farm over there. And that's actually a different gate portal over there. Um, that is our cocoa bean farm, really big one. You guys are building, this is going to be our netherwork farm. So the guys already put in the fly machine, which is going to place in all the soul sand while AFK. And they also got the soul sand, which is used to have the network grow on it. It's actually a pretty simple farm that Xerox designed. I guess I'll help with the glowstone. So up here on top, where this glowstone they're placing, it's going to be a checker pattern across. And this should give um, significant enough of light so that um, Endermen don't spawn down below. So we're going to help them place in all this glowstone. So at this end here, Xerox built up one of our floor placers. Uh, we do have a YouTube video about it if you guys are curious about how it works. But essentially this is going to allow us to AFK and place in all the soul sand across this whole thing. Because it is 6 by 8 chunks, which is quite a few chunks. We don't want to place it all by hand. So this will make it much nicer. And Xerox is just putting the last few bits in it and then we'll give it a try. And while this guy is AFKing and placing in the soul sand, we will be working on some permanent fly machines. These machines are just to help put in the floor, but we'll remove them later on. Uh, the permanent fly machines are actually machines that are going to go back and forth and harvest the nether uh, wart. So we'll work on that next. But I'm going to go ahead and just double check his fly machine here to make sure it works. Do you want me to check it now, Xerox? Wait, yeah, that would be nice. Yeah. Okay. So we tested the fly machine in a backup on the world and we tweaked a couple things. We've got to put like a piston here and observe over there. But now it should be working. So Xerox is going to put his alt here to AFK it. And he has a water stream which is going to send items to the player while he's AFKing. And there you go. He just logged in his alt account. And it looks like he set up like a little dropper system here to drop slow sand out to the player. Ah, nice. There's a soul sand. And yeah, we'll help the other guys. And the other guys are putting in uh, glass over over here. Right between all of the glowstone. So we'll help them do that. It should look really nice. We went ahead and we finished all the glass on top of this. That was a lot of glass. Filled in all of these um, holes in between the glowstone. And over here is the fly machine which is putting in all of the soul sand. Uh, Xerox has his alt account AFKing that. And it's 
placing in this whole flat area of soul sand. And while that thing is going, we will work on the ice streams underneath to collect the soul sand once the farm is going. So the machine is placing in the soul sand. We're going to come in here and place in the collection system. And this is going to be some water streams down here. And when the items come off the edge, they're going to fall into them and then get zipped around and packaged into shulker boxes. And then we'll take those uh, to our spawn chunks. So that's what the guys are working on now is the ice streams. And we'll go help them as well. So now we're putting in some of the circuitry to run the fly machines. There's a little bit of circuitry in each of the corners to send the fly machine back and forth and also to reset it so when it gets to the far end, to send it all the way back to the beginning again. And you see Soul Sand used um, Xerox's alt account named Lavender Magic actually surpassed my high score. So I'm no longer in first place. So these um, these these floor placing fly machines are really OP if you want to get your stats up. So we finished a fly machine in this corner. A lot of different pieces and redstone to update it. But everything is here. And we got two of the four corners done. And now we'll work on the other uh, two corners of these small fly machines. And then the rest is all done automatically with the machines. So we're done using the fly machine here, which is a floor placer. And we can go ahead and remove this and fill in whatever pieces are left behind. And pretty much all of the soul sand is done now. If you see how it did a nice job at filling in the whole area. It made it a lot easier than putting it all in by hand. So let's go ahead and remove that. So we went ahead and we finished all the slime stone in this corner here. Not too much, just this little machine here. Uh, the guys are going to take this obsidian and take it all the way to the other side. This is what stops the fly machine at the very end. And now we have three of the four sides done. The last one we'll do is on that side, which is kind of the side that's beside all our storage that we're using to build this up. So let's go ahead and do that side. I see some of the guys are also planting uh, the nether wart.
So this is the last corner. We just finished the redstone in here. Uh, we got a little bit of devices, like this little flying machine here, and some redstone, which is going to activate it to send it back the other direction. The only last thing we have to do is come in here and raise the ceiling up a little bit so the flying machine can actually make it underneath of here. And then the warp farm is pretty much done. I think we just need to do a collection system after that. So we need to move the ceiling up by one. So we're making a fly machine, which is just gonna push all the blocks up by one. Yeah, yeah, it looks like it's working. And we might have to push them up one more time after that. Let's go to the other end and stop it. Okay, let's make it to the other end. There, stopped it. That should help a little bit. So we went ahead and moved the flying machine up by one, and now we're pushing the next uh, piece of glass a little bit higher. And that should help a little bit. Then we'll have to do the rest by hand. But yeah, flying machines are pretty nice when you try to move something up or down by a little bit. So we went ahead and we finished the majority of the farm. All we really need to do is like put in the storage system and some of the other minor things. But as you can see, it looks pretty amazing. We are here on top of our automatic mushroom farm and it's just a little bit off to the side of it, looking very nice. And pretty soon the whole thing will be filled in with uh, another plant. And once that happens, it's gonna be very reddish with all the nice glowstone that will keep the endermen from spawning. End. But yeah, that is uh, a very nice project to have, to have a very large netherwort farm as we have a bunch of smaller ones but this will be one that could splice tons of netherwort which we can use to make the netherwort blocks as well as the red brick should be very nice to use as um, walls and stuff on our server so zero x came in and he test run it and he got working he actually ran this quite a bit here beside the actual fly machine which a player would ride let's check the scoreboard for netherwort used wow <laughs> he placed over 310,000 nether wart. That is impressive. Let's see, I don't think there's a really easy way to get in here. I could just break this and come back in here. Um, oh, okay, so you just place a chest here to stop the fly machine. We'll try to get this thing a go. I don't think there's really any on or off switch other than just starting this fly machine. And the way the machine works is it just goes back and forth and every time it goes to the end, it pushes it over to the next side and back and forth, back and forth and get to end and it kind of resets everything. But there's no like official on or off switch other than starting this thing up. Uh, this is just a, yeah, it's just like a two way fly machine with extra extension so it can go uh, reset. So it's actually like a three way fly machine. And I shouldn't have to start with any nether wart. I think I'll just pick up some and plant some. So it looks like the player was in here planting in this row. So it looks like it looks like he's planting over here. I guess we can kind of try it out. Oh yeah, I could just right click right there. So I'll just grab somewhere. Actually, this is where it's going to fly and break. Uh, to update this, I want to have probably some buttons. The way I normally would update a machine like this is just place a button on top of that observer, which should power that direction. But it looks like I can't do that. So probably the next way to update this is placing a torch and break it and then hurry running over here and try and get into the flight machine. Uh, it should be interesting. Probably come in from this side, might be the easiest. Place the torch and then try to hop into the flight machine, click on it, and then switch to another wart. There it goes. Click on the, click on there. Hold on right click. Yeah, and they just go AFK here. And I'm breaking another wart in front of me. So that's how I'm getting more um, another wart to replace my seed one. We're getting to the end here. And, oh yeah, I moved this direction, okay. So I moved over one. These are some uh, ghost blocks. You guys can click right through them. Yeah, essentially how it works. And every time the machine breaks one, it will give you the amount of harvest. So you get extra. And then you will eventually pick them up when your flight machine moves forward. It just keeps going back and forth. Really nice design and great way to have a huge netherwork farm. That way there is always some plant that is fully grown the time you get to it. Because that's a major thing is these number of farms, they take so long to grow. You normally have to have them quite large. And with this, you can put in a lot of another wort 
and keep the player quite busy. And any nether wart that I don't pick up is going to get kind of pushed to the end and drop into the water stream. And then that's going to be sent to our world spawn point. And we're going to put up our new storage system over there. Very nice machine. I would have to AFK this quite a bit to actually surpass uh, Xerox's Alticam because he's been running this for quite a while. Okay, we're getting back to the end again. It's going to push over one and then send us back. Very nice. Let's go ahead and see if we can stop this fly machine. Just going to put a chest. Oh, probably put it over here like he had his chest. Like that. And actually, by spacing it out like this, it's a little easier to start fly machines uh, than crowding it. But there you go. That is the farm. And then when this piece comes back, it'll push all these little wart blocks into the water stream. Very nice. This thing is quite massive. I mean, look at all the nether wart here. And by the time you go all the way down to the end and then it resets you all the way back to the beginning again, like all that would be completely grown. Very impressive. So you can see this module, the fly machine, uh, moves the player over by one. There's also one on that side too. I think the machine itself actually moves over two. It sends the machine back and then it moves itself two times. That way the next time when it comes back, it'll be ready to pick it back up again. And all the items are just going down here, falling in there, and then they're all going to the end over here. I believe someone built a shulker box loader. This goes this way. Ah, okay, so it goes a little with some water systems goes against this into this item sorter. That is a big item sorter. I haven't seen this yet. Okay, so currently I just got them going to the chest. So I guess they need to hook up a shulker box loader next. That way they're already put into boxes for us. This thing is quite large. It's one, two, three, four, five, six chunks. Six by six chunks. That's over 9,200 nether wart just in the crop farm. That's pretty insane. So the rates of this farm could probably be figured up just by doing a little bit of math. You get an average of about three nether wart every time you break one when it's completely grown. And this farm allows for the nether wart to be completely grown by the time that they are harvested. So the fly machine moves about two blocks every second, meaning you're gonna break about two nether wart. That means this completely AFK farm will produce over 25,000 nether wart per hour. That is just ridiculous. And we're kind of limited to how big we can actually make this because for the nether wart to grow, it needs to be in the random tick chunks around the player, which is a 16 chunk diameter circle around the player. And since the farm is a square, if the player is like over here, the nether wart might not be growing in that corner if you make it much bigger. So you have to try to fit a square inside of a circle. So this is pretty much as big as you want to make it without adding layers onto it. So it's really cool to have another farm done. Part of our goal, which is moving any farm that doesn't need to be in the overworld over here to the end dimension, that allows us to have other counts AFKing in the overworld for specific things without players affecting them if they're AFKing at these farms. Since there's plenty of room here in the end dimension to build these farms, and they're a lot easier to spawn proof. So if people do want to use an enderman farm, that's really the only reason why people come to the end dimension. And remember guys, if you haven't seen all the rest of the videos part of this series, you guys can watch them from the beginning with the playlist down in the description. But that's going to be it for today, guys. Thanks so much for joining me as I have fun in survival. Bye-bye.